I am a pipeline engineer at Petrolux Midstream, a fictitious midstream company that owns an interstate crude oil pipeline. Drag reducing agent or DRA is injected into this pipeline for both pump energy savings and capacity increase applications. I monitor all pipeline and pump operations using PyVision. It's a web-based tool to visualize Pi system data. On this landing page, geospatial data in Esri ArcGIS is integrated with operational data in Pi. I also track high-level financial KPIs such as additional percentage revenue increase from energy savings and capacity increase. Equipment operating KPIs are also displayed such as pump reliability, utilization, and health. All these values come from Pi Asset Framework, or Pi AF, which serves as the foundational operational data hub, integrating data from sources such as field sensors, financial databases, pump and DRA curves, simulation tools, and maintenance systems. Pi AF is the underlying platform I use to configure this digital twin asset model. I can visualize the entire pipeline pressure profile with the x-axis showing pipeline length in units of miles and the y-axis displaying pressure values in units of PSIG. In this demo, there are three pump stations for this pipeline. Each of these pump stations have two pumps. The blue markers indicate a non-DRA scenario while the red markers indicate a DRA injection case for the same pipeline. The orange markers indicate the maximum allowable operating pressure or MAOP at that pipe segment. The data is captured every nine minutes and one can go back and forth in time to see how this pressure profile changes. In reality, once DRA is injected, real-time data for the non-DRA scenario would be unavailable but can still be calculated or simulated and then sent to Pi. This is done to compare the effectiveness of DRA injection with a non-DRA scenario. I can also visualize the pipeline head profile, where the blue markers again illustrate a non-DRA scenario, while the red markers indicate a DRA case. The orange markers now indicate the maximum allowable operating head, or MEOH. Another benefit of DRA is to keep the pipeline operation below the MEOP and MEOH, where the non-DRA case was almost at this limit. Because the y-axis now is in units of feet, I can also visualize the pipeline elevation profile. Just like the previous screen, I can go back and forth in time to see how this head profile changes. Now, I select a pump station and examine the effect of capacity increase with DRA, where I can view financial KPIs such as percent capacity increase, percent daily additional revenue, and others. I can also compare the discharge pressure and flow rate operating trends, where the orange line is the DRA capacity increase case, and the blue line is the non-DRA scenario. I have also included the DRA performance curve, which shows the percent drag reduction versus DRA injection concentration in parts per million, or PPM. I can overlay the current operating point to see how our real-time DRA performance matches up as well as change the time frame of this overlaid data to show sample points every hour or minute. If I go back to the main landing page, I can take a closer look at all the pumps by clicking on Pump Stations. I can see that these pumps are red and flashing. This is an example of exception-based reporting where I can change the color of the blocks and also filter which blocks are shown based on specific asset attributes which are configured in Pi AF first. For instance, if I want to display only the pumps that are running with more than 2000 horsepower and that have been running also less than 300 hours since the last maintenance time, I can configure this and then click on the refresh button.
By selecting a pump block and going to the DRA capacity increase link, I get to a dashboard that shows current operating conditions, trends, and manufacturer pump curves, which compare the DRA case with the non-DRA scenario. Similar to the DRA performance curve earlier, I can track how our real-time pump operating point matches with manufacturer curves, which are pump hit versus flow rate and pump efficiency versus flow rate. I see that due to the reduction of pump hit required because of DRA, the flow rate increases, but this has a negative effect on pump efficiency based on where I am on the efficiency curve. Going back to the pump normal operation display, I can change the start and end time of the display to show that Pi can store future data, which means Pi points with timestamps in the future. This capability can be leveraged to store forecasts or predictions, such as discharge flow rate in this case. This way, real operational data can be compared with future forecasts on the same trend. I can also track maintenance data as well as downtime or excursion events for our pumps in a separate display. Here, I see run hour values, motor vibration data and trends, as well as high vibration and bearing temperature event frames. These events are color coded to indicate level of severity, with orange more severe than blue. I can select the pencil icon and assign a reason code for this event such as a worn bearing in this case. Pi also has the ability to directly integrate with a computerized maintenance management system, or CMMS, such as IBM Maximore or SAP. Using event frames together with Pi notifications, data during an event can be sent from Pi to the CMMS. This link can be bidirectional with data sent back to Pi from the CMMS. I can also click on a specific event in the table to open a more detailed event display, such as for this bearing temperature event, where I can add or remove other relevant parameters to be trended and analyzed, such as pump horsepower. I can also acknowledge and annotate or add a comment to this event with the person entering this information tracked. Thus, with this integrated collaborative data model in Pi, I am able to effectively diagnose pipeline and pump issues to improve production, quality, reliability, and safety.